hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is Yetunde aka YBA and in today's video I will be sharing a bit of story time I will be talking to you about my miscarriage experiences uh, it is sort of like the perfect month to share this journey because this month of October is pregnancy and infant loss awareness month if this is your first time of coming to my channel I say welcome uh, I have lots of uh, awesome videos make sure you check them out here 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 and if you're an OG and you've been following me on this YouTube journey thank you so much for believing your girl before I start this video if you're someone who is going through it it is still fresh for you and this video can be a trigger because I'm going to get into the details of what happened to me um, please this is I'm inviting you you're forgiven to stop watching uh, I, my aim is not to trigger anyone or to make anyone feel sad um, I mean it's not exactly a happy video uh, but at the same time uh, it's important to share our stories why do we do storytelling it's to aside just preserving history is to inform educate and sometimes honestly to just get a load off so uh, if this is who you are if you're that person feel free to exit this video I have other fun videos go and watch something else on my channel okay all right so let's get into the gist of Today. I had my first miscarriage uh, in 2014. 2014, yes. 2014. Um, it was right after I had my first baby. So I had my first child. And uh, as at that time, he was over a year old already. When I got pregnant with this uh, baby, I started to fall a bit ill. But you know, nothing serious. Just I'm just tired. I'm exhausted. Again, uh, one of my own main pregnancy uh, symptom is I start to lose my hair. So I lose my hair when I'm pregnant. And so my hair, I will, you, I'll comb my hair and it will start coming off in tufts. And so my hair started to come off and that was when I was like, okay, this happened to me with this last baby. Are you sure I'm not pregnant? So I took a test and it was positive. And so I went straight to the hospital, they confirmed and everything looked great. The time for baby number two, right? <laughs> wrong then this child i was sick all the time i always had high temperature i always had a fever something was always wrong with misha but you know i remember i kept on telling my mom that oh, mommy i think something is wrong with this baby and my mom said oh please just because you had it great the first time oh you my yato just like omo my yato which is pregnancies can be different the same way your kids are not the same like they're different just the same way their pregnancies will not be the same so you got a good the first time around you know just go on and, go on. and don't worry maybe after the first trimester you know everything will be fine i was exactly i remember 13 weeks and about four days when i bled the first time and on this particular day i had gone to work i drove myself i came back home and i parked the car and then I got to the door. I remembered that I, I bought something that I forgot in the car. So I came back into the car. So when I opened the door, the stuff I forgot is in the passenger seat. So when I opened the door, I just saw this, you know, the stain patch on the seat I just got up from. So I looked at it, and I'm like, what is this? And I touched it. I put on the light in the car, and it looks like blood. Then I touched my skirt. No, it was a gown I wore, a black gown. I touched the back and it felt a bit damp. In fact, I just left the thing I came to get and I ran into the house. I remember on this trip, this day, my sister, my immediate younger sister was with me. My husband was out of the country. So because I'd been just sick here and there all over the place, my sister had come to stay with me while my husband wasn't home. So I ran into the house and I'm being baby, baby, baby. I'm bleeding something is going something is wrong we ran to the bathroom and we checked and of course everywhere down there blood day like it was a lot we packed up we got in the car I called my husband and we ran to the hospital now this was around about it was late it was really late it was about maybe 10 10 30 p.m. and so we went back to the hospital so we didn't get to the hospital until like maybe 11 it took about 30 minutes and when we got there Cause there was no gynae so I saw a GP and the GP guy was like okay uh, but I need the sonographer those are the tech guys who do the ultrasound unfortunately we couldn't find the sonographer 
they called the guy, it was apparently the guy had taken the night off because nothing was happening and he was somewhere very far away. Nigeria hospital. They called the gynae who is supposed to be on call and the gynae said the same thing, if we can't get an ultrasound done, there really isn't much I can do, put her on a bed rest till tomorrow. So I actually refused. I told them, so if you're keeping me here, I'm just lying down on the bed. Are you giving me a drip? They said no. Are you giving me medication? They said no. We're just going to wait till tomorrow morning. I said no, I'm not sleeping here. I'm going home. I have a one-year-old at home and um, I just don't want to sleep here. So I left, you know, and I went home and I laid there. And the doctor told me if anything changes, just come back. And I woke up in the morning, I dressed up and I went to work. Yes, I did because um, by the time I spoke to my husband, we agreed that we're not going back to that hospital. So I went to another hospital on the island. I worked on the island at the time. And when I got to the hospital, they checked, and then they said, it looked like it threatened abortion, and then prescribed two weeks bed rest for me. Then I got home, and two days into my bed rest, I started to bleed again. And then when we got to the hospital, uh, the doctor, we saw, you know, the thing about miscarriages is once something has gone wrong, you, you would sense it from the demeanor of the medical practitioners. So there was a lot of, you know, the measure, take the measurement, and then he said, I want the sonographer to take another reading. They booked me for a scan in the lab. When the sonographer was about to start, when he told me to lay down, he said, oh, I should wait. Next thing, my doctor comes in with another doctor, and then they start the scan. And then I asked my doctor, is something wrong? And I was like, mm, eh, just let's, let's, let's finish the scan. And then they started the gig. And, you know, my, so they were talking in hushed tones, you know. Ah, sure, sure, so do, 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 this, this, you know, they were pointing. <sighs> I think I knew that something bad had happened in that moment. And I just felt somehow, I can't even describe how I felt. It felt like I was dreaming it, but I hadn't said anything. So I just lay there and then they finished and then they were like, um, okay, so Mrs. Aremo, can I call you that, you know? Once they start to, they know your name, oh. they're about to deliver bad news. So they said uh, they are afraid that I, I just had a missed, miscarriage you know first it was threatened abortion now i'm missing i'm like what what does that mean uh they said they, they can't find a heartbeat and the other doctor who came in who was an older doctor said oh no um well we can't find it but I, I want you to complete your two weeks bed rest and then let's do a final check and then we'll see and i was confused because you are telling me I've had a missing miscarriage and then on the other hand, somebody is telling me uh, I should compute another two weeks. What is it? Why am I doing this? Uh, then they stepped out and they were having this long conversation and honestly, I think I panicked because the next thing I did was I left with my husband in tow. I told him, we need to find another hospital. Um, I don't trust these doctors. I don't understand what they're saying. Uh, I'm, yeah. So I freaked out. I wanted a third opinion. I wanted someone else. I, I just, I didn't, yeah. So, uh, so we left. And um, our family friend who had apparently gone through something like that, I recommended a doctor, another doctor to us. And then the following day we booked an appointment and we went to see this doctor. And when we went to this, see this doctor, the doctor said he did a scan. And then he was like, let's wait for the two weeks that there's a flutter he did a transfer giant scan i've never looked at the word flutter the same again since that day by the way every time someone used flutter in a sentence i remember that day so there's a flutter and yeah so he advised that i continue with my bed rest and so i did my two weeks the remaining part of those two weeks was the longest, it's one of the longest periods of my life. I, I had every bad dream you could possibly imagine. I, I cried and then I stopped crying. Uh, I prayed 
to God to please let my baby make it. Uh, sometimes I, I was convinced that there was no baby. I would wake up and I'll be fine that morning, no sickness. And instead of me to be happy that I feel better, I wanted my sickness back because I know that it was the hormones that were making me ill. And now if I'm no longer ill, could that mean my baby was gone? So yeah, basically I was going crazy and it, it, it's not a good state of mind to be in. It was a terrible place to be in. Uh, yeah, two weeks on the dot, I ran back to the hospital. And when we got there, I remember it was on a Saturday and uh, he did a transvaginal scan. By the way, in the this two weeks, I stopped bleeding. So there was no more bleeding, nothing. So I was sick off and on. So I wasn't as sick like every day like before. So when we got back there, he did the scan again. When he did the belly scan, he just, you know, he went and said, mm, this is not good. The baby was measuring like he was like about nine weeks old. The baby had grown significantly smaller. And my doctor told me if it's not growing and it's even growing smaller, that's not a good sign. And so he said, okay, do you mind? Let's do the transvaginal scan just to be sure. So the transvaginal scan is uh, just a bit uncomfortable. It's invasive. That's the word I would use. It just feels like everybody's just all up in your business because they've got this probe that is, you know, sticking there. And there was no heartbeat. There was no flutter. There was nothing. He tried to measure again. It was the same thing. And that's it. Uh, they told me that my, I had had a miscarriage. So he gave me the option. So we could give you medication. But he said, because of the length of time that you've been pregnant for, I would recommend surgery. And so I, I told him, yeah, uh, I have the surgery. So he told me, do you want to come back? I said, no, do it now. Do you have time to do it now? Can we do it today? I remember my husband was like, oh, wait, babe, are you sure? I'm like, just get it over with. I'm just tired. And I, I was, that was how I felt. I was just, I just couldn't. I just didn't want to do it anymore and yeah so I got the surgery that day and I had a bad reaction to the anesthesia when I woke up I remember I woke up and I couldn't see I don't know what happened to date I remember I was crying that I couldn't see uh, nah I don't even want to talk about that waking up from that surgery it was terrible I think I, I hallucinated I so surgery was done and I went back to work on Monday even though my doctor said I should take two days off but I told my husband I said I'm fine I'm going to work I'm okay and then I went to work and I think uh, looking back now that was just my way of dealing with it I just didn't want to 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 sit with it and I didn't want to think about it I just wanted to move on and so I went to work and I got to work and it was just my boss that I told and I had a miscarriage. Hmm. Guys, that was out on Thursday. I was at work, just doing my, minding my business. Then I got the sharp pain. It was like someone shot me in my belly, through my back. I, I, I screamed out the pain from nowhere. And I grabbed my belly and I was like doubled over and I was crying. And, and yeah, I was rushed to the hospital. And when I got to the doctor, found out that I had a terrible, terrible infection. I had to take like IV uh, antibiotics, a cocktail for about three days. And I had to be coming to the hospital every day to come and take it because I just simply refused to, to stay in the hospital. I couldn't stand the hospital. Again, going back to this hospital where uh, my baby was you know, declared gone he didn't he, he just no and the doctor was so nice he was like it's okay if you don't want if she doesn't want to stay just stay you know just come back so yeah my husband <laughs> god bless him had to do the stressful go back i think i was going to it was every 12 hours so i was going for three days. So I would go twice a day in the morning, then go back in the evening, and da, 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 da. so it was a whole lot of back and forth. And then I did that. 
And then after my course of antibiotics, guys, I would not stop bleeding. I bled from this miscarriage off and on for probably like another one month. It was horrible. I had to be wearing pads all the time. So I had um, the skin in my inner thigh had a bad reaction to wearing pads all the time. I was miserable. I slowly but surely slipped into like a depressed mode. I was, was, was sad most of the time. Uh, I would go to work and I was in customer service and smile at my customers, but the evenings were rough, the nights were rougher. Uh, it wasn't a good time, so yeah. That was my first miscarriage. And um, I would go on to get pregnant later that year. So I had my second child the following year. When I got pregnant, I harassed everybody. I was ready to even resign. I just didn't want to do anything because, you know, part of when you're having miscarriage is the feeling of guilt. Did I do something wrong? Uh, did I eat something wrong? Did I take on too much at work? Or was it the workload? Was it stress? Did I climb too many stairs? You would think of see, things that are silly, but you would keep on thinking of it. And that was what happened to me. I was just not taking chances. I couldn't imagine myself going through what I went through. Uh, just like some months ago. I was afraid from the first trimester all through most of the second trimester that I was going to miscarry that child. So it came with nightmares. It came with paranoia. Like I was paranoid. I, <sighs> yeah, that, that's what, you know, loss will do to you. So yeah, that happened. And then I had my beautiful first daughter, second baby. And I was so happy and, uh, you know, our pregnancy was fun, it was also very easy. Like, she didn't really demand much from me, just eat good food, mommy. And that was it. Uh, the day I had her, I cried. It was like a heavy, uh, something was lifted from my shoulders. Because I think, I didn't know, I carried the weight of the previous miscarriage all through. Uh, that pregnancy even though I felt good you know but they were fleeting there were just these moments that would come and it was intense fear I was so afraid I remember that when I was going to deliver my daughter I started to shake like when it was time I was shaking I had a c-section and I started to shake and they I they had my husband was in the room he held me I was shaking. They couldn't put the spinal in for a long time. I, I, I had a panic attack. I, I, I never prayed so many times before because I was just afraid that something, that something was coming to take my baby away. And yeah, that's the after effects. That's, I don't know. That was my experience. So moving on to the other plenty of miscarriages. It was just one more kid and then we're done with kids. That was the plan. And then I got pregnant. The next pregnancy that I lost was, I think, to date is still the weirdest one for me. I was pregnant and I didn't know I was pregnant. And I thought it was my period, but it had blood clots. So I went to the hospital and they just said, oh, that was a baby we lost. And I didn't know how to feel. I remember that day. Uh, then, then they checked, they did this, and I said, oh, it's, everything is gone. Just, you have light bleeding. And it was so weird. In, in, in the same visit, I found out I was pregnant, and I found out I lost the pregnancy all in one, like, sitting. And I remember that particular one, too. I didn't know what to do with that feeling. Because now, it was different from my first experience. I didn't get to even go attached to the baby because I didn't even know the baby was there. Uh, I didn't even get to, like I didn't, to, see, it's weird to talk about. I can't explain it. Uh, I remember that day, it was a Friday, I told my husband we're going clubbing. I don't want to go home. Uh, a part of me felt relieved 
that after all, I didn't get to know that baby. At least that was what I thought. Um, so it's fine. So I shouldn't be sad, right? I Coco didn't know. Wrong. I remember we went clubbing. Uh, you know, I danced. Uh, I cut my hair that weekend. I just, I didn't really know where to put what I was feeling. But something had happened to me. And you know, one of the bad things about some of these experiences is you don't know how to describe the feeling, how you're feeling to anyone. So what ends up happening is you don't talk about it. And then I got pregnant again. And I'm just gonna skip through the rest of the miscarriages because if I sit here and I tell you from start to finish of each miscarriage I had, and oh Lord, I miscarried at nine weeks. I miscarried at uh, ten weeks, uh, and I miscarried at eight and a half weeks. So yeah, and all of these uh, miscarriages came with their own feeling. The last miscarriage I had almost, literally, almost killed me. They, I took medication for for me to expel the baby and I took it and a piece of tissue got stuck in my cervix and I was in pain. I was delirious with pain. I was in so much pain. I was seeing rubbish. This piece of tissue was so small that they couldn't see it on time. So they had to go back in and do the surgery and get that piece of tissue out. After that last miscarriage, I, I actually told God that I didn't want any more children, that this is it, it's okay. You know what? Never mind that I wanted a third child because, I mean, this is punishment. I can't keep doing this. I'm done. I am never going to have another kid again. And I made peace with that decision or so I thought. So I got pregnant with my last child and that was an experience on its own. The entire pregnancy was, I never felt like it was a totally different experience from my first two babies. And I have my beautiful baby girl now who's 14 months old. And so, you know, that has been my miscarriage experience. I'm going to make a video on how to support someone who's had a miscarriage, who's lost an infant. All my babies that I lost were uh, I think it was just our first one that crossed into the second trimester. They were all, I lost all of them in the first trimester. I have friends who have had stillbirths, who I, I, I have a friend who has had a baby and she lost the baby the same day she had the baby. It's, you don't know what to do or what to say. Uh, that, I don't think there really is anything you can say or do to make that kind of person feel better but you can be there for them and that's just the bottom line in how in whichever way you can you can be there for someone grieving is very personal and we all grieve in different ways like our grieving process some people it's fast some people it's slow what i know and i believe we can do is to find a way to reach one another and to support one another, which has always been my life's goal. So thank you so much. This is a lengthy story video. Uh, I know it's not exactly very happy and preppy. Don't worry, November, I'm going to resume happy content. At least more fun content. But this is also important because there is no good without bad and there's no bad without good. So that's life. We have to talk about these things. So don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to share it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel at 7 p.m. All around the world, uh, people are going to light candles for the babies they have lost, uh, the babies that didn't make it. So you can support by doing that. You can light a candle for your friend, for yourself, just for someone around you. And I'm sure they will appreciate it. So thank you so much. I'll see you next week.